There she is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to start this. Ready? Start it. Hey, everybody, and welcome to As the World Works. Tonight, I got to tell you something. We're going to go back a little bit in time before we have shit tons of fun with my guest. It's 2003. I'm in California for the first time. I signed with the William Morris Agency in voiceover, which was a huge honor. Back then, you used to go into the agent's office and uh, to audition. And sometimes you'd sit there for hours and there would be people like Denzel Washington walking by you, Matthew McConaughey, people like that. You're sitting there like a humble nobody at the time. <laughs> there was this kind woman and during the process of sitting there um, and we had this great conversation. She said, tell me about yourself, tell me your story. So I did, and what are your ambitions and things like that? And I said, I, I just kind of told her everything. She said, you have to meet Marky Costello, <laughs> who is my guest tonight. And I contacted her um, and she has this thing called the um, Become a Host Boot Camp, which is everything about hosting, TV, industry. It's anything that you see a host on TV or a host in the world in general, which is now influencers and so forth. But at the time, um, she taught me the skills to sit in the seat that I'm sitting in tonight, it would not have even started without the influence and direction by Marky Costello. Uh, I'll give you a little snapshot, but we'll get into it here in a second. She is the world's number one media host. Host got, coach, yes. What's it called? I'm the number one media host coach. coach. There it is. Yeah, there media it is. Host coach in the world, 32 years of experience. How have you not aged? You? You. Why haven't you aged? It's apple cider vinegar. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> Sam, how old are you now? Can, I, you say, can you say that on a podcast? <laughs> how old are you now? <laughs> I'm 50 years old and proud of it. I'm and two women, years older than you, girl. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah. Sam, and wait, did you also get remarried again and have another baby? I did. I have a five-year-old, almost five-year-old son, Max, the Max and Daddy show. I don't know if you've seen it, but I it is. I all the time, and I'm always like, I miss Who is the this kid. <laughs> Who is this kid? Exactly. <laughs> I did. I did. So CMEG is Creative Management Entertainment Group, which is where I met you over in... Um, Olympic in you? West LA. Yeah. Now, can, I you, can I give you a tip right now? Because it's- Here we go, yes. Okay, here we go. You know, the audience in 2020 has a very short attention span. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like you have about three seconds to engage an audience. So it should be like, hey, it's Sam Williams. You know, you're you're watching, listening to, you're consuming, da 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 Like, and today I have blank. Get into it. Because the audience just is swipe, click, boom, bang, doom. Yeah, it's uh, TikTok, done, right. five seconds, move on. Right. right, 140 characters, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, that's where we're at. Yeah, you know, okay, so back in the day, by the way, you used to say to me, we'll start this over. Hey, everybody, I'm Sam Williamson, and tonight my guest is <laughs> you. Would I mean, do you remember this? Okay, get ready, everybody, put your hard hats on. Because tonight you're in for a ride. That was the first. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. And then teach it, and then tie it up with a pretty bow, right? So right, and tie it up in a pretty it. bow, right? Exactly. And then I just get into it. Get into it. Like you know, I think everybody now is zooming or you know doing something in front of the camera. I can't stand when I'm on Instagram, just kind of like you know fucking around, and someone's yeah. like, "Hello," and today we're going to talk about wellness and well like and i'm just like click swipe like you, no one has that luxury unless you're oprah winfrey like yeah. we'll, we'll hang on her every word we'll yeah i get that her, some people have so, like i just did i don't know if you saw the recent podcast with michael priest so no, michael priest is a director from back in the day knew well didn't know your granddad but he was a script writer uh script supervisor from the 50s worked with um, Hemingway uh, and Marlon Brando and all these guys, right? And then he traversed in 1970, 20 years later after doing The Old Man and the Sea, Mount, uh, Mutiny on the Bounty and things like that till 75 when he got his first break on 
on streets of San Francisco. Then he ended up being holding the record still today to 300 episodes directed on episodic television by one director on a little show called Dallas. Right, a little show called Dallas. Then he goes to Walker, Texas Ranger, where I got my first break in, in, in episodic television and so forth. So his story, I had to do in two parts for over an hour because people want it. He's never been asked to speak at a film school. So you're talking about a time capsule that is relevant, right? So, but I get what you're saying. I get, you know, this is about like, get to where we are. So let's get to where you are. Ooh. You know, what's great about not going live. Yeah. Is I can edit this shit and post. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. So we'll... right, what are you doing right now? What's going on in your world? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, obviously we just went through being closed for five months because of the pandemic, Hollywood shut down. You know, I mean, anybody who was working got put on hold or had to start working from home immediately. Um, and, you know, we slowly in the last three to four weeks, we're seeing the breakdowns pick up finally. I had maybe 10 calls this week, which was super encouraging people who needed hosts for nice shows and nice paydays. Um, so we're just now seeing episodic come back. Everything is now coming back, thank God. But it was a scary, you know, half a year with nothing going on. But Interesting enough, though, I did a lot of coaching over the break because people realized, hey, I'm doing Zoom meetings or I'm doing this and I suck in front of the camera or I get bored or I'm like, so I've done so many executives to, you know, regular hosts to big, big name talent. I've been blessed enough that, you know, I've coached some really awesome, amazing people. So what, um, what do you 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 were an author producer manager performer you wrote a few books right in the last uh I, I've several years i had my own i've had a couple shows i had my own reality show before that years ago i did a show for tlc called love you love university right. I, you know, people have always thrown me in front of the camera and people always ask me even my 11 year old son goes mom why don't you act and, you know, truth be told, I guess why I don't do anything in front of the cameras, I like to live a nice lifestyle and I don't want to starve and I don't, you know what I mean? I don't want to be like, oh, I booked a job two months ago and, you know, right. I just, but to be honest, you know, lately I've been doing a lot more. I've been creating this really cool creative co-op where people, first time screenwriters can come in and do all cast, like basically a table read. Um, I'm creating so much content. I have a really big, um, I'm pitching my third pitch to Amazon for a really cool show. And, you know, I'm, I'm producing more, I'm creating more. And I love it. And I'm really picking and choosing who I want to coach or work with. You know, Thank I have- Thank you for working with me tonight, by the way. What is the bio process? Is that how you say it? Yeah. You know, no one reads a bio anymore. So a mm -hmm. bio is just a video bio. So it'd be like, hey, I'm Sam Williamson. And, you know, when I first started in my career as a voiceover actor, and then we might cut to some of the VOs you've done, you know, and right. then I got my first walk on role on Walk of Texas Ranger, and it was a co star. And, did it, and then we'd cut to that. So instead of like reading about your bio, we get to see, oh, my alma mater was, and I went to high, you know what I mean? Like we get to sort of see all of that in a visual medium because everything is, is that specifically for entertainment. Or are you going outside of the, that world at this right point? Now it's been specifically for entertainment, but I just coached these big guys that run a big Bitcoin company. And they had asked if I could do their bios of their executives and shoot it and edit it and for their websites. So I think more and more people are sort of catching on to, we have a whole generation that wants to press play. They don't want to read. They don't want to have to scroll down. They just want to go bloop and press play. So you resist that. Uh, you go with it. I know that, but you're no, also. I resisted. I resisted a lot. I okay. Social media, like when when I heard that um, Donald Trump might take TikTok away, I was like, I was retweeting. <laughs> <laughs> Like you look at Charlie DeMillo, you know, that girl that has like the most followers on TikTok. My 11 yeah. year old is in love with her. She yes. signed with UTA. She's doing all of yeah. these like Prada deals and here and there. But the truth be told is she can't act. 
She can dance for 15 seconds and shake her titties on TikTok. So 11 year old boys want to like, you know, have wet dreams about her, but she can't act, can't dance, can't sing. What, what, like, so as talent, what the fuck do you do with that? And people that have come out to LA to make it and they're a triple threat with everything you just described are going, where do I go? Right. Right. What do I do? Because we talked a few years ago that now is the expert voice. Yeah. Right. It was, it, and now it's become like the one hit well, wonder. You know, the crazy thing is I was coaching this girl the other day and she's like, oh yeah, I do a show on Instagram and I just break down the different reality shows and what my opinion is of them. And I looked at right. her and go, sweetheart, why the fuck do we give a shit about your opinion? Like, who are you that we're supposed to care about your opinion on the Real Housewives of New York? Like yeah. I have my own opinion because I watch it. But I think that's the big misconception right now. People press record on their laptop, on their iPhone, and they've now learned how to like edit a little bit. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, can you manage me? I'm a host. And I'll be like, oh, send me your materials. And it's just like a YouTube channel with a bunch of videos that are like eight minutes long. And yeah. they've had four views. Right. And it's like, sweetheart, why would I want to manage you if you've had four views? Like meaning, you know, like, I think that's the big misconception is that doesn't mean that your talent. And as a matter of fact, you know, Quibi, you know, Quibi launched at the beginning of the pandemic. And that was a shitty time because I had coached so many people on Quibi. But the reality is the executives at Quibi were smart because they said, yeah, I like that person on Instagram. And I think they'd be great to host the show about fashion. But they're going to go get two weeks of media training. They're going to know how to read prompter, coexist, interview. Like that was so important to the executives. And we're seeing more and more of that. We're all have like the head of NBC News going, hey, can you have them, you know, can you prompter train them for two days? Can you inter Can you make sure they're great interviewers? Like, so now more than ever, if they're listening to this, watching this and they're like, yeah, I really want to host or I really want to be an actor. I really want to do voiceovers. You have to really get the knowledge and the training because that's going to be key. And so where do you get that? Well, I mean, if you want to be a host, obviously you would want to contact me, you know, I mean, and, and I'm going to say, I'm going to preface it by saying I'm really picky with who I'm working with. You know, I've had the luxury of coaching amazing people like Carly Kloss for Project Runway, Alex Rodriguez for a CNBC show. I turn on the TV and it's like, oh, there's Cammie Crawford on Catfish on MTV. She did my boot camp in New York. Like, you know, I mean, there's so many people on TV that I've coached over the years that are all popping. So many, so many influencers will call me and say, hey, I've amassed 5 million followers on Instagram, but I want to do the Today Show. I want to do more stuff. So I'll bring them in, I'll give them some copy, I'll put them in front of the camera. And they're like, oh my God, I've never done this before. How do I read this? Teleprompter's going so fast. And I'm like, right. So can you imagine going into a meeting with a big executive and not knowing how to do that? So yeah. it's so important to get training. It's so important. That, and that's how I preface this. I, I would not be where I am with the idea of this show as the world works without having the context of, your training. So first I took your boot camp, and then we did ongoing okay. training because I realized that it is a practice, not perfection. Right. Progress, right? Not perfection. Progress, it's a marathon, not, not a sprint. But let me ask you, what's the, tell me about this show. What's it, what's the creative about? Who are you reaching and what do you want to reach with this? So the idea is that it started with people who have influenced my life. Okay. People who you can't find in a phone book that someone taps you on the shoulder, like, was it Victoria? I'm just, I can't remember her name because it was so, when I met you, I mean, I was going to ask you what's your fire and what lights it, but ah! what light, <laughs> that's my favorite part about you is your laugh. I love your fucking laugh. I um, mean, yeah. So this was really about telling stories of people who have had an impact on me in a big way that you can't reach uh, in the yellow pages that, um, uh, that have these big impacts on the world and big influences. Like I'm talking to Randy Newman next week, who right. happens to be the son-in-law of Michael Preece. And I didn't, I mean, I knew that, but I didn't realize right. that, you know, who Randy Newman is, right? right. So he's in, yeah. Right. So, you can't, you and can't, the idea that he would right. be, you know, where he is and you too, I mean, um, but I've had these little sort of parts of my life that have had 
meaningful impacts and in a big way that you've learned skill sets or been influenced by or been inspired by. And the generation that we're talking about that are the millennials or, or it doesn't matter, people that are like, especially in the last several months going, where am I going? What's the blueprint? Right. My right. light is, or am I, yeah, my light is, my fire is lit by um, this. And I really want to do this. So I really would love to be out. Someone today, I was telling them, that I'm interviewing you and, or I have a fireside chat with you. And they said, I've always wanted to be an anchor. That would be like the best thing in the world. Well, so what's holding you back? Right. I don't know who to even talk to. Right. And I said, this is perfect. You should right. talk to Marky. But then again, there's this select like, right. You, you edit that and say, are you, right. are, is this really your heart? So where do you see that? Like you saw that in me and you were like, yes. And, and you didn't believe it for a second because you tested it, right? right? And you, you're right. like, you see so many, you said, I get a stack of people every day that says, okay, I want you, right. I want you to manage me. I want right. you to coach me. But what, it, how do you, how do you see that? What do you, what is it that tells you that? Yes, there you know, it's the it or whatever that is that you, you believe it. Here's what I look for. And, and when I see it, I just want to be a part of it. Like, um, confidence. I, I love people that, um, oh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah. I love confidence. So confidence, like when someone's really confident, I also love when someone knows, Hey, I want to do music. I eat, sleep and drink music. Like I like when they have a brand, you know, um, and they have to have that sort of not give a fuck about what people think. You know, you can't be, a, you cannot be in this business and worry about what people think of you or what you say. You have to be fearless. You really do. You have to be like, I don't give a fuck. You don't like me, fine. Don't give up. Like, because we're living in a world where everybody has an opinion. And I worry about the millennials because their whole life is based on a like, you know, oh my God, they liked this video or they liked my outfit or they liked, you know, and it's so unrealistic, right? Like to kind of live by those rules. Sure. Um, What's interesting, I watched on Netflix that documentary, The Social Dilemma. It's oh, fascinating. Did you watch oh, it? Oh, yes, I watched that. It's scary and fascinating. But in the last month, because that dropped on Netflix, a lot of people are now kind of backing off of social media once they sort of heard from all the executives of what social media is really all Apologetically, about. Apologetically, right? Uh -huh. They're apologizing yes. for creating this um, uh, algorithm. One of the that main guys that was part of the creation of Facebook and Instagram said, they, the interviewer asked him, would you have your kids on social media? And he said, absolutely 100% hell no we're zealots about our kids they have flip phones they don't even let them have phones the only reason those executives let their kids have phones flip phones so the parents can get a hold of them that's it because they said everything that they're doing they're selling our stuff they're 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 planning on marketing off of us for the next 40 years and if something is free like instagram's free facebook's free well guess what they're making a shit ton of money on it being free to us. And it's like they've unleashed the beast and they said this IA that we've created, they don't yeah. even know. Uh, how big if, it is. They don't right. even know how big it is. Right, they're just it's like- It's taking on a life of itself. And they're right. like, I'm sorry. And I that's not scary. Know right. that it's created this political divide on its own. Maybe Q was part of this, right? Uh, 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 whole, maybe, maybe. They think that Q kind of created itself in a yeah. way like, Totally. these people, but so even, I'm going to become. But Sam, even if you see how Trump won the election, it was all, they were hacking into Facebook ads, like, and because of the AI, like they, like, let's say you were disillusioned and you were like, you know, there's too many homeless and I'm calling my city councilman. Well, they knew, okay, he's disgruntled. So let's put an ad right in front of him, you know, pro Trump and like, let's like, you know, just, you know, gouge, you know, Hillary. And so they, they prey on our psyches and our moods and the scary things is the computers know all of it. So I think you need to spend an hour to two hours on social media a day max. And that's like, I spend maybe a half hour. Yeah. I think also all of these people that call themselves influencers, celebrities, like models, they're not. Like a girl the other day was like, I'm an Instagram model. She was five two and maybe, you know, a buck 30. 
And I looked at her and I go, what kind of modeling, sweetheart? Not editorial. And she goes, what's editorial? And I was like, <laughs> it's just like, you know what I mean? Do like, you know, you know Bruce it, Weber? Do you right, know exactly. any of these? Just, you know, and so yeah. anybody can call, how many coaches are on Instagram? Everybody's a coach. Like everybody's every, a coach. Everybody, I, I was going through like the, all these women, like in their fifties, like, I'm a coach on how to get your finances. I'm a coach in how you can have a positive day like every day. And I'm thinking, what? Like, hello? I'm kind of betting on the come. I'll tell you, my. you asked me a minute ago, what is my objective with this uh, show? Yes. Podcast. Um, it's to shine the light on people and to help tell their stories of people, obviously, who've influenced me, because that's all I know is people who I'm in one degree of influence from or (laughs) separation from but to shine a light on their brand and what they're doing and things like that in their world because they they're you are so important to me in my life uh more than you know um and to give people a chance to pause and listen because i will tell you that there are there's a certain point when you become adrenal uh, adrenal fatigued with all this information and just want to sit back and really hear and sit at the feet of people like you and get educated on the craft. Right. And that doesn't just happen in 15 seconds. The first 15 seconds of this will appear on Instagram, right? Right. And they will say, you want to continue? Right. And listen to this. And that there are people, I believe, out of 8 billion that go, Yes. Right. I I don't care about the likes. I don't care about the, you know, there's a monetization thing out there and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, but this is important that your story is important. You as a person are important. And that's why I really meant like what lights your fire personally, because I know your world is big, like people look at you and it's a very big world. But I also know you have a family. I do. Yeah. I, have, I have a 22 year old son, Lucas. Who yeah. works at, he works on E True Hollywood Story. He has his own apartment with his best friend from kindergarten. Um, he just bought his first car by himself. Like I bought him his first car, but now I just bought his second car all by himself. Um, he's doing amazing. He's such a good guy. And then I have Finn, my 11 year old, big gap in between. And, you know, Finn, when I tell you, was born to perform. Like I never believed when parents were like, oh my God, my kid wants to be in show business. And I was always like, bullshit, you do. You wanna live through your kid. With my oldest son, no, he he's a genius behind the camera and he's great musically, he's just a genius. My 11 year old, he's got my, my grandfather was Lou Costello, his great grandfather of one of the most famous comedy duos. You know, they took Universal Studios out of bankruptcy. Universal Studios was about to fold. They signed Abbott and Costello. They shot Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. It made so much money. It took Universal out of bankruptcy. And 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 to this day, there's a big building on the lot dedicated to them. If I ever want to take Finn on the tour or go to the park, they give me free VIP tickets and everything. But my point is, is that I look at Finn and I'm like, wow, he has that gene to perform. He has that it factor. And, and I would never, ever say that. Like his imagination is insane. And I, we, sometimes I'll say to him, oh, hey, I printed out a, a, a scene from a new movie coming out on Netflix with kids your age. Let's, let's reenact the scene. Let's work on it. And I kid you not, like Sam, he gets so into it. And I love that. I love to see the transformation. I love coaching because I'm really good at it. And I could look at someone in 10 seconds and go, okay, you're in your head. You're thinking too much. You have no idea who the fuck your audience is. And they'll be like, my audience? And I'm like, hello, that's the single most important thing. If you don't know who your audience is, how the fuck are you going to engage, enlighten, educate, and entertain them? You need to know who your audience is. So I love to see that light bulb go off and someone go, oh my God, I get it. And the crazy thing is post COVID, so many people now contact me and say, I realized during the the lockdown, like our lives are so, you know, tenuous and short and I want to go after what I really want to go after. And I want to host, or I want to be an actor. And I see so many people from all ages going after their dream. And they'll say, what kind of advice can you give me, Marky? And I'm like, get educated. Do you want to go to a doctor that didn't go to medical school? No. Do you want to go to a lawyer who didn't go to law school? 
Do you want an accountant who's not Jewish? No, no, no. <laughs> Never have an accountant that's not Jewish, by the way. <laughs> so true. Um, you know, and Amen. I can say that because I was married to a Jew and my oldest son is half Jewish. And I love the Jews because they're like the Italians like me. That's so great. Were you born in California? Born and raised, baby. Born and yeah. raised. Even though everybody thinks I'm from New York, but I'm born and raised. And, you know, my whole family was from Italy and New York. They all came yeah. out here for Hollywood. But, you know, my mother was a casting producer and did what I did. My dad was a record producer and he did all the Beach Boys and he testified in court against Charlie Manson and then screamed, I love you, Charlie, because he didn't want Charlie to come back and kill my mom and his kids. But like, you know, he's all through Helter Skelter. He gets interviewed every time he comes in town because he's the last of that group of Dennis yeah. Wilson of the Beach Boys, Terry Melcher, Doris Day son that ran with Charlie, you know, and you know, it's, I, I'm born, I'm Hollywood royalty. I'm born in this town, raised in this town, my lineage from my grandparents, my dad, my mom, all in this business. And the truth be told is like, I'm a snob when it comes to talent. I want true talent. I want to coach true talent. I want to work with real talent. And I want to work with people that realize like it's a privilege and not a right. I think in 2020 with Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and TikTok, people think it's like they're right. Like I'm gonna shoot videos and, and be a star and be an influencer. It's, it's, it's a privilege to go into a studio or walk on a movie set. Like that's a privilege, not a right. And I think there's 1% out in the world that's really good at it. And the 99 other percentage needs to do our taxes and, and you know, go to the doctor and, you know, take our appendix out. You know what I mean? And, 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 and uh, you know, and help us when we're going to court to s when, when we're getting sued. You know what I mean? Meaning because not everybody can be talent. We need our doctors, our lawyers, our accountants, our teachers, our male people. Like we need, you know. So I look for real talent and I look for people that realize it's a gift. You know, it's a, God, it's a gift. And, it, and, and hunger plays a part of that too, right? Uh, well, and I think, Sam, I really want to say this nicely for your audience. You know, we have dreams and we have gifts that God gave us. And not always are your dreams and your gifts the same thing. So you, somebody might say, I'm dreaming of being the next, you know, uh, Juliana Rancic on E! News, right? But that's your dream, but that might not be the gift God gave you. Mm. And I think it's really important for people to sort of understand the difference. You know, when- Are when you people, that honest? Do you call it out? You, I mean- A girl the other yeah. day, I was coaching the girl and I go, okay, get in front of the camera. And she goes, oh me, no. I, I was like, do you want to be a fucking on-camera host? Like it shouldn't be me like, you know, begging you to get in front of the camera. You should jump the fuck up and be like, yeah. You know, because when they see me do something, they'll be like, Marky, show us how to do it. And I can get up there and go, hey, this week on the number ones, Americans rule in Europe, the British. Con and they're like, how do you do that? And I'm like, because I've been doing it for 20 fucking three years. Practice makes perfect. I do think in hosting, you don't have to have a lick of talent to be you, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be the most authentic you that you yeah. can be. And then yeah. you might have to learn little tools like ears don't blink. So be a good listener, you know, um, piggyback when you're interviewing. So it's fluid for the audience. And then you talk in sound bites, hit your transition words in prompter, like all of those things I can teach to someone if they're the most authentic them they can be. What is a story uh, or who is someone or uh, an idea that comes to mind of someone that came in very raw, yes. got, the, got the lesson, understood it studied it and is now oh there's so many jesus um there's there's a there's a great girl her name is alex and she had been i was doing some stuff for the network fuel and they were like the action sports network for surfing skateboarding back in the early 2000s um and she was a fuelie. Sandra she, Sanchez was on there. She was in my class. Aunt Sandra was too but before Sandra. Sandra was this really cute girl alex sweet girl she, the executive said, Marky, she really wants to be on our network. Can you please like teach her? And like, as a favor to them, I like put her in the class in the boot camp, and she studied with me for like two years. And then one day I was doing like a showcase and a bunch of agents came into class and she got signed by ICM. Her name is Alex Curry and she's huge. I mean, she does all this sport. She's got, she's a, you know, she's got 5 million followers. She's beautiful. But with Alex, 
She showed up every week. She had that, like, I'm going to do it. Like there, there was no doubt after like the first five months that she wasn't going to succeed, yeah. you know, because she had the tenacity. She was like, I'm, I just want to get better. It's when people come to me and they want to be famous after a month. Or like I was teaching a class last Tuesday and these new girls were like, oh my God, everybody's so good in your class. And I said, how long have you guys been studying here? And one person was like three years, two years, four years, six months. And I said to them, how long have you been here? And they're like a month. And I'm like, right. So like you want what they have, but they've put in some years in being great. So I think people just have to realize, you know, you go to college for four years, right? You know, you, you go to medical school, school, I think for six years after college, like, Anything you want to be great at, you have to put in the work, the time, the education, right? And, and so, someone that can't travel to LA and study with you, are you doing anything virtual? Yeah, I've been or doing do you lots offer of, any online I, classes. Yes, I do lots of Zoom or FaceTime or Skype privates, but I have lots of people flying in because I'm all COVID compliant. So, now instead of a two day boot camp, I do a one day on a Friday, 11 to five. People fly in and fly out the same day. Like people will be like, because I do it from 11 to five, people will take an early morning flight. They go right from the airport to my studio. I teach them all day. And at five o'clock, I let them go and they hop on a six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock red eye home. And so, you know, yes. I accommodate everybody. But, you know, the truth be told is I have the most amazing people I've been coaching with. And what's so amazing when like Scooter Braun, who's like the biggest music manager, you know, sends me people like that to me is the true honor when I'm like, or like someone will be like, oh, the head of NBC or, oh, Carly Kloss told me to call you or, or you know, J-Lo told me to call you because you coached her, her fiance. Like, I love it when like big names or big executives refer people to me because that's when you know you've truly made it, you know, like where it's like they see the proof is in the pudding. I Do have you remember Annie, on Annie at uh, E Entertainment? Yeah, Annie's still there. At her E? Yeah, She's Annie's still there. Still there. Yeah. yeah, that was Annie way back in the there. day. Yeah. Well, look at what happened to E. E's, you know, there's Entertainment News is dead. They just canceled E News, um, you know, and the writing was on the wall for the last 10 years. Like I used to say, no one's going to wait till six or seven o'clock to get their entertainment news. They've gotten it all day long with social media, YouTube, Instagram, you know, so everything's evolving very quickly. And listen, I say to people, you truly want to do a show, then what's stopping you? You have everything at your fingertips, you know, press play, do it. Look what you're doing. Exactly. The four by six closet that during COVID, I said, okay, it's actually started with the Max and Daddy show, five minutes done. He, right. His idea. Right. <laughs> See, right. His idea at four right. and a half. And then we started this. And, and so uh, can I ask you a quick question before sure. we have to take off? Yes. Thank you for your time. Um, uh, you mentioned the Beach Boys. Let's talk about how music influences you. Ooh, I love, you know, I listen to music all the time. My yeah. kids joke because I love a lot of 80s like you know I was an eight you know I was 20 in the 80s so like you know to me that was the heyday of like you know cocaine partying the sunset strip like you know uh best cocaine I ever did was with Jack Nicholson um on where he shared a, a lot with Marlon Brando that was back in the 80s and I was this young. is but less than zero time huh this is total and I love less than zero one of my favorite movies of all time but my point is um what was the question <laughs> Music. How does it influence oh, you? What it, what it, yeah, I love so. music. You know, I was, I was, you know, six years old and at my first concert, the Beach Boys. You know what I mean? I'll never forget. I ate a yogurt and I'm, I'm on the stage by a big speaker and then I threw up the yogurt. Um, <laughs> uh, music is the soundtrack to people's lives. Yeah. I love music and I love all kinds of music. I love Kanye. I'm really into Kanye lately, like really into his early stuff. I love Kanye. Um, I think Kanye's a genius, but misunderstood. I even think Trump is a genius to a certain degree, but he's so, someone needs to give a media training lessons. If I had one hour with him and Kanye, I would change their whole lives. So Kanye back with uh, graduation, that was a good album. Yep. No more parties in LA, please baby, no more part. And I love Hey you Mama. You could... Yes. Hey Mama, yes. Hey Mama. Hey Mama. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm dying. Or, I can go there. But what about uh, how would you change their life? In a, if you were doing the debate last week, by the oh, way, yeah. one of the premises of my show is no religion or politics, but I'm changing that. <laughs> you have to <laughs> get sticky. So if you were doing the debate last week or this week, this ugly week, 
please. What would you do differently than uh, first of all? How would you shut the? <laughs> first of all, it's so yeah. sad when I'm watching the debate with my 11 year old because like they're calling each other names and being so petty. And it's like, I think what Trump and Biden have to realize is that there's tons of people watching this, including kids that might wanna be the next president in 30 years. And what you're showing them is despicable that two adults in their seventies cannot act like, you know, it, like literally, like exactly, it was embarrassing. And, you know, you know, Trump, just all Trump, if I could have Trump, I would say Trump, stop tweeting, number one. Someone take his goddamn phone away from him and do not let Trump tweet. Number, that's number one. Number two, he's always so busy to say like, well, we've had the greatest economy and I've done this. And, it, you know, he's like this narcissist. If he just for once said, look, the American people need this. And here's why I did this. And I think if in the long, like he just does it. He comes from such a place of I, 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 instead of the people, the people, the people. And Biden, uh, he's got to shut take, up, man. Just shut up, man. And you're trying to teach your kids not to, right. not to say shut up, shut right? Up, right. So. And Biden, I like Biden. I don't know if he's seen. I, I don't know what the fuck. But Biden is like, I hate to say it, like I, I don't want to vote for either one of them, but I'm going to vote because even what's happened in California, our governor and mayor in California should be ashamed of themselves. California with the fires, the homeless, it looks like a third world country and. You know, what I'm really trying to do is give back. I started working with kids that are in the foster care system from the ages of six to 15 and teaching them commercials, acting, hosting, you know, to give back to these kids that, you know, don't have the luxury of a parent to write a check to come to class for something creative. And I think it's so important that we all need to do something to give back. I call my local politicians. I call the city councilman and I say, there's a homeless guy parked on my office street. And now my students and my clients don't want to come into my office because they're afraid of the homeless guy. You're fucking with my business. Get this homeless person in a designated area because it's not okay like you have to be vocal we have to use our voice if we want to have choices so use how do we help choice. you how do we help with that cause with helping kids, with kids and foster all i can say is how you can help i'll tell you guys more like later because i'm just getting it all sure. right yeah, now. Yeah. i'm talking to them and giving them my credentials and you have to be vetted and make sure you're not you know and rightfully so but I'll have that up and running in about like five weeks. And I'll absolutely would love to come back on and, and please talk to your audience and you about how we can give back to these kids that are brown and black that don't have opportunities. Because here's the thing, I don't ever mistake my privilege for like, you know, ignorance. Someone told me recently of this black woman said, Marky, every white voice is the equivalent of 10 black voices. Mm. So I use my voice. What happened to Breonna Taylor was a fucking joke. It was awful. I watched the documentary. Everybody, the police, the judges, they were all wrong, 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 wrong. And I do think, you know, everybody says defund the police. That's never going to happen, guys. Come on. But we can make rules where guess what? If you're written up one time as a police officer for like, you know, excessive behavior, you're fired. How about that? Done. Yeah. All of these cops that have been in trouble have been written up six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. I mean, it's keep it simple, stupid. And maybe we'll get back to some of that of, you know, just getting back to keeping it simple and right and, and some honor and integrity. And it has to start with our president and our president, you know, running mate. They have no integrity and we need to get back to no name calling integrity. How do we go from beautiful Obama to Trump? I'll never know, but I guess the pendulum needs to swing. The interesting thing about, you were talking about wildfires and blaming and uh, mismanagement of the forest services and things like that. It, that hit home with me. My mom passed away New Year's Eve, 2013. I've talked about this on previous uh, episodes a couple of times. Um, and uh, a friend of mine encouraged me to go to my first time to Northern California to St. Helena um, to the Hoffman process. I uh, love the Hoffman process. Institute. Yes. So um, I, a month after my mom passed away, I delved into the eight day retreat. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't survive that. Um, what uh, Sulphur Springs did not survive the, uh, the Hoffman, fires this it last burned week. down the Hoffman. Yeah. <gasps> I yeah. So that was heartbreaking. And that was as close as, you know, like, boom, I was like, these fires are real. Right. And uh, when something's that, 
that's there are a few people there that are I'm having conversations with because of the impact they've had. And if you're familiar with the Hoffman process, you know how fucking insanely impactful that is in yeah, life altering. You learn to forgive your parents. You know what I mean? And that's the yeah. greatest thing about the Hoffman Institute. So many people are angry at their parents. And, you know, we put my sister through it. I went through it. Like, you oh, know, wow. yeah. And you, I didn't know, you know that. Yeah. And I walked away going, like, you know, my dad is my dad and I love my dad. You know what I mean? And yeah. my dad did the best he could. My dad was yeah. 30, you know, like no yeah. 24 when he had me, like yeah. imagine my, my 22 year old having a kid, he's going to be a shitty fucking father. Like only because he's <laughs> too young and doesn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know, the Hoffman yeah. Institute, you know, it really allowed me to forgive my parents and sure. have an amazing relationship with my father to this day, who's 82, like yeah. best of friends. I love him madly. And in my twenties, I was so mad at him, you know, yeah. and I, after going to the Hoffman Institute, I forgave him and I wasn't yeah. mad and not walking around with that anger and hate it's freeing and it feels great. And that's what I would say to anybody watching right now. It's like, stop judging, stop being angry. Like everybody's so angry. Stop. You know, I say hi to someone walking in the street and they'll look at me like I'm crazy. Like, do I know you? And I'm like, Nope, just passing by saying hi, like a human, you know, and they, they look at you as if like, it's crazy. It's true. Um, my last guest was a guy named, um, Willie, uh, geez, he's, uh, I can't even, um, Man, he he's a big heart of a hero guy. Uh, Willie Bernay is uh, he, he started this. Uh, he's an art professor, and I went to college and met him. And long story short, is he does this uh, exhibit around uh, installation around the uh, country called "We Are All Homeless," and he started buying homeless signs in 1993 from people because he had this fear of them, like we all do, like they're homeless. What do we do with them? Right. And so he just engaged and started buying these signs. And then he uh, collected over 1500, went back and got his master's degree, he had this huge ad company and, and uh, his professors and masters said, you have something here. So he started this installation. They did this documentary uh, a few years ago on his traverse across the country. Um, and it won all kinds of awards, but um, it's that point of, I said, what, what can we do? What do we do? It's exactly what you just said, Marky, which is acknowledge them, acknowledge people, just look in their eyes and say you're human. Right. And you know what? We're all guilty and no one's to blame. Right. No, absolutely. Right. Like I talk to the homeless people. I'll be like, you know, hey, do you mind me asking how you got in this situation? Like, you know, and and this guy the other day, I'm coming out of Target. And he's like, ma'am, ma'am, can you buy me some twin size sheets? Because I can get into the shelter if I have sheets. And he asked like 10 people, I'm coming out. I already did my target shopping. And he telling me that, and I said, okay, fuck it. I turn around, I go back in and I come out with the sheets and I go, you swear to God, you're going to go get into a shelter with these sheets. And he was like, yes. And then I pulled a $50 bill out of my pocket and I said, have a nice warm meal before the shelter. And he started yes. crying. Yes. And you know, yes. he was like, no one ever t treats us like humans. We're like the, the scum of the earth. And you know, I, you know, you've got to find that empathy. We've got to be humans because we're all one paycheck away from being homeless. And how would we want to be treated if something so unfortunate happened to us? And I think we need more of that in the world. It's like, put down the microscope and pick up the mirror. Who do you want to mm, be? You know, nice. and, and, like that. and that's what I, I've learned a lot about myself. You know, you turn 50 years old and you really the saddest thing, we're the only culture that doesn't really like celebrate elders we kind of throw away elders in you know america like oh you're old you don't know anything like you know and we know so much when we're older we're so much wiser we're so much more sage the shit i know now fuck i wish i knew this when i was 20 but you know that's life right i gotta jump i'm having dinner i have dinner and love in you hey we'll yeah. catch up next time thank you marky i love, love you. you keep Take up two. the work sammy thank you. Bye, love you love you bye love you